Welcome back to another episode of the Mecha Will Show. Ladies, gentlemen, lovely friends, you guys are about to embark on an epic journey with myself, Mecha Will, and my show, which is what you're watching, and my good old buddy on the other side there, his name is Alistair. I would tell him to say hi, but this is some post-commentary done by me because this young man does not do commentary for whatever reason. If you want to check out his channel, he does a lot of PvP on the Dark Souls front. Go ahead and, and uh, search up uh, Dark Moon Knight. There should be some links in the description below. We are about to embark... Like I was saying, on an epic fucking journey. I don't want to spoil anything. This was my very first time. I know it seems weird going through a blind with post-commentary, you know, obviously with the foreknowledge of what I had, what I have now. He's, he's getting fucking pumped. I am getting pumped too. See, if you guys didn't recall from last episode, we pulled this little bell thing. And the bell kind of brought forth the hell spawn of demon itself, of the, of the devil himself. And uh, we're about to walk into that. The first thing that was like, you know, when I'm walking, when I, f when I saw myself and I was like, you know, you're walking on nothing right now. You're either Jesus or some bad shit is about to go down. So I walked right on through. And oh my god. Look at this fucker. He's massive. I looked at the name King of the Storm and I'm like, alright, okay, so th that makes some sense. This looks like it's going to be one of the most epic uh, boss battles of my life. Now I have heard... A couple of things about this uh, boss battle and I had when I was playing it beforehand about how it's like some of the more uh, some of the, one of the one of the more tougher fights of the game and uh, this is something that uh, you know I don't know if I was prepared for but basically I'm taking it on cope with my buddy here and uh, we're slicing his leg and that's what's happening in real time that's what a bad commentator does basically they just like look at what's going on in screen but they don't add anything to it. They're just like, yeah, we're 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 slicing, we're hitting its head. Now I'm running over. Now I'm looking at him. But oh my god, like, can we get okay? Let's get into it a little bit. Can we look at the fucking design of this boss? All right, I did get roasted in the back, so not a good, not a big fan of that. But like, Jesus Christ. Okay, so the boss atmosphere. I mean, we're fighting inside and on top of a literal storm by the man who bringeth the storm himself. The fucking king of the storm. He's the king. There's nobody higher. There's no emperor of the storm. Uh, I realized that if you hit him in the head, it seemed to do a little extra damage. That was nice. But anyway, we seem to be taking this guy down pretty roughly. And I was like, at this point, I was like, is this it? This can't be it. I was told this was a tough boss fight. I was told that he'd be a little tough. But maybe, you know, we just happen to be killing him you know, pretty easily for whatever reason. And then I get like just totally scorched. That was when I hoped that you know there was no double tappage going on, and there wasn't. In case you guys know what a double tap is, it's basically where he torches you, and your character gets up, and you get roasted again, and you had no choice but to get roasted. Basically, we're taking this guy down. The boss battle, or the boss, uh, the boss music, it's on point. I'm not gonna say you know anything different than that. Besides the fact this guy just got roasted, and toasted, sliced, and diced. Whatever colloquial sayings there are that also rhyme with each other. Uh, and then I saw a cutscene and I'm like, alright. That was getting some Ornstein and Smo vibes. You know what it's like when you like break somebody's glasses? Like one of, like the bad guy in an action movie's glasses? And he gets really pissed? We, that's what we just did to this guy. Oh my god. And he fucking just, he just, like, he just sticks his sword in his dead friend to suck up his energy, his god juice. At that point in time, I was looking at myself and I was like, you know, is there any way I can escape this? Cause I, this doesn't look like a fun fight. So, round two, bitch, let's go. Uh, looked like he had a massive ass weapon. So, first thing I do is, you know, miss the, uh, miss the roll. So naturally we're, we're off to a good start. But this, I am like poised to actually take this guy down and it's very exciting what's going on right now. But okay, so the first phase of the fight, you're fighting a massive beast with the king on top of him, causing general mayhem, anarchy, and trouble for you. The boss music is just some of the most tenacious, like, I'm gonna kill you, you're gonna die, and I will roast your entire family with my lightning thing and my cool ass hair. That's what's going on the whole time. But this, this battle, this is something you don't want to run into. This is like, you know, his hair looks kind of like, you know, when you go to a family reunion and, you know, that crazy uncle that always shows up, you haven't seen him in like 10 years, but he like, 
You know, he occasionally will show up for holidays and that's it. Yeah, it's like that's like the crazy uncle. I almost got I almost got stuck there like a pig. But we're doing some like legitimate damage to him. I was feeling the hope, man. Let me tell you what, you know, to quote another epic film, hope has forsaken these lands. Do not do not cling to hope. It has forsaken these lands. If you guys are wondering what that's from, go watch the two towers, because it's a, a bastion of fucking entertainment. So I think we would have had him there had I not just totally died. You died. Fuck you, man. I was trying to do my job. I was trying to be the best that I could be. That's all my mom said I had to do to beat the bad people in my life was be the best I can be. I tried my best. Unfortunately, I had no Mr. Miyagi. You know, my friend here, he's a good, he's a good counterpart. But I had no Mr. Miyagi to help me. This entire episode, I believe, is going to be centering around this Nameless King here. So let's really talk about... There's a couple of things that are going to shock you about the Nameless King. And I don't want to say them right now because I want the shocking moment to be like... Bam! Kablamo! This is what it was. Uh, so until then, we'll, we'll say something there. But we're going to be you know, moving right on forward. Me with my trusty... My trusty bro by my side. There's nothing like a like a good, you know, battle with a deity to like start your day, you know? Have a little bit of breakfast, some multigrain Cheerios, Wheaties if you're really feeling like you need some extra strength and not a good good battle with a god, you know? You guys know what I mean? This is a good way to get the muscles limber. Occasionally die, you know, gets the blood flowing, really does. Okay. We found our way. Ooh, baby, I love your ways. I'm going to try to not cut this as much as possible. There may be a point in time in this video where I do have to cut something, but I promise I won't leave out any of the attempts. I want you guys to know the exact number, time, and the you know the amount of attempts that we took uh, to kill this guy. Is it going to be a lot? Is it going to be a little? I don't know. Just stick around to find out. It's the fucking uh, benefit of being in a video, man. I can, I can tell you guys to wait till the end. And you guys could skip to the end, and I'll have like a troll there waiting for you. A little Rick, you know, Rick Astley overplayed. Rick Moranis, not played enough, dog. We'll throw some Rick Moranis down. Some sort of Rick Moranis troll. I'm, I'm totally into it. As much, uh, as much of that as I can have. Intimidating. Check. Powerful. Check. Health sponge. Check. Uh, lots of, uh, you know, lightning uh, effects. Check. It's all in there. You know, everything you need to create. A terrifying experience, you know. Don't go, don't kill the nameless king uh, for your boss, uh, for your, uh, for your uh, fucking date night with your girl. It's probably not the best move for you. Look at the hair on this beastie. I'm scared. I'm scared of my life right now. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Please don't kill. Don't kill. I see you looking at me, girl. I see you looking at me. I'm not. Yo, man, I'm not that I'm I'm not that easy, you know. I mean, you think I'm playing hard to get, you know. I mean, you got to put in some steps. So I got to feel like I'm appreciated. No double tap again. Something to something to go for. All right, this is uh, this is a, you kind of just bouncing me back there. I kind of feel like I'm just a, a pawn in your game. I'm just one of those little plastic whack-a-moles that you just decide to keep smashing because you think it's fun. And you pay the, the privilege of uh, four coin tokens or, you know, a dollar in fucking uh, real money for the privilege. You're wasting your money, man. Get some of that chugging in. All right, we're going to take them on. We're strong. We're strong. Oh. Okay, keep the phantom alive. My boy's got a heal. I don't know what he's doing. He's like, I feel like this is one of the things that, like... Caused us to not have a good time. Look at him, man. He needs to heal. What are you doing? Okay, all right. He figured it out. I figured it out. Front hand. All right, let's take this calmly and slowly. I always have the shield up, you know? I don't, I'm not, at this point in time, I was not familiar with a lot of his moves. Wasn't quite sure how to dodge him. It's always the case in, a, in the Souls game. So keep the shield up. Guy's opening his mouth like he thinks he's something special. Yo, mom, your parents didn't love you. What do you think about that, dog? Your parents didn't love you. 
They left you here for me to smack at your feet. All right, fly away. Cry like the baby that you are. I know you're a baby. Oh, that was a double tap. I think I tried to like, I think I tried to like shield it to see if my if my shield could do it, and then I just got like double or triple tapped right there. Not the best experience of my life. You know, I've been to some cool places, Mount Rushmore. You know, a couple of trips inside the United States. There's a couple of goodies down there. You know, I live in California, the Pacific Ocean. There's some beauties, is what I'm trying to say. There's a there's some ways of life, but. Uh, I finished this battle with uh, you know, two less S's than I had last time. Oh, don't you cry. Oh, you would do. Weirdo bitty nameless king doesn't like getting stuck with the sword. Oh. Dude, look at his calf muscles, man. That guy's got some serious calfage. If you had to, like, level up, and I say that because we're playing a video game right now, but if you had to, like, exercise and work out one part of your body, don't you think the calf? would be by far, like, the most damning. Like, the, just the, the fucking, yeah, and then I just got roasted again. Oh, man, one hit of this guy. Look at you. You think you're fucking, you're doing a good job? Y you are doing a good job. No, nah, but seriously, though? It's all about the calves. Here's what I'm trying to say, man. Here, think about the th kind of things that you do in your life, all right? The things that like require a lot of exertion, of force. I'm talking opening a door. Easy enough. I'm talking, you know, any, you know, doors of all kinds. I'm talking like car doors and stuff like that because they exist in different places. I'm talking about lifting things. I'm talking about uh, physical violence towards an aggressor. If somebody is after you and your family, you need to do something to them. Am I? Am I wrong? Now. Talk to me. List me one of those things that you can't do with your calf. Go on, please. Please. I'd love to hear the explanation of how you can't lift things with your calf muscle. You could create a fucking pulley system where human beings at this state in our life and our on our evolution, we should be able to devise some sort of rudimentary Neanderthalic uh, system to, to, you know, be able to lift something with our calves. So please, please explain to me one thing that you couldn't use your calf for in that situation. You couldn't use your calf to open a door? Dog, you just kick the door down. You couldn't use your calf to fend off an assailant? I fucking disagree with that entirely. Now imagine you not only had good calf muscles, but you had the best calf muscles in the world. I'm talking godly calf muscles. I'm talking nameless king calf muscles. That'd be... That'd be a great experience. All right, and we're back. I apologize profusely for that. I told you there might be a situation in which we have to cut out a small amount of the video. I, so my personal information was at stake. I want you guys to know all of my, you know, my name, my full name, probably my address somewhere in there. It was on the screen, so I had to do what I had to do. You know, we're in this, we're in this to win it, um, and it's all for you guys, so you don't have to sit here and wait through a video. You get right to the action. Right to the sweet, hot action of me picking out a new armor set. Because that's all that's all we're trying to do. See, here when I'm fighting people, I'm like, you know, let's try and pick, uh, let's just try and get something here. Let's try and get, like, let's try and play smart. And the thing that's the smartest to me is picking out a good armor set that defends against a lot of the elements that you're facing. So when I was facing something like, like the fucking, uh, the little, uh, you know, Artorius of the Abyss Knights earlier in, in this Dark Souls 3 game oh, in this, the day of my daughter's wedding uh, you know, I decided to switch to some good fire resistance and I just smoked them at that point in time because fire was the only thing that I was kind of like not having a good time with, so right now check out my pants collection hey girl check out my pants collection And, uh, of course, you got to keep the weight limit under 70%. I don't know why I've decided to... Yeah, okay. We need to pick a good helmet. There it is. The Faram set. We're just rolling full Faram here. Faram's a good set. And, you know, they got a lot of... It's got a lot of good things going for it. So, here we are. Let's go ahead and take this. I think we're on round three. Even though round two was kind of a little bullshit. I don't know how I feel about that. Ladies and gentlemen... Welcome to, this is no longer my house, this is the Nameless King's house until I am the one to defeat him. That's how it works in nature, that's how it works if we were all naked and starving and fighting for our lives with no electricity in the world. 
And that's how it's going to work here in my show today. Uh, because that's, you know, not too far from the truth of where I sit at this moment. I'm sipping on some green tea. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to level with you guys. I'm not wearing socks right now. See, the thing is, people don't... Most, most people don't realize the life of a streamer or of a YouTuber. And if you're... Let me tell you something, you know, you're sitting down, you're recording videos all day, all the time, if you're a heavy worker like I am, and like, you know, as long as you don't have a face cam on, nobody could know if you were just, if you were just streaming entirely naked. I could do it. I could do it if I wanted to. I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. I haven't at this point in time, but I will let you on a second secret. It, a second secret. It is definitely crossed my mind. Because who would fucking know? Nobody. Who would it bother? Probably nobody. The voice is all you guys are here for. The voice and the gameplay. But I will tell you, at this point in time, I am being highly despicable and not wearing any socks. And uh, you know, the socks are, are what you are the last thing you take off before it's business time. That's why they call them business socks. I told you you were free gay. See, I thought I was being smart, doing the old run and uh, run and hide. Didn't work out as well as I thought it would for me. Well, you win some, you lose some. You know, I'm a warrior. I'm trying to just trying to fight and strike and and you know destroy this beastie creature. Still wasn't aware that this guy has some nasty uh, nasty wind going on there. I don't know if that's uh fart joke or something. I don't normally do those, but, you know, it, there's something in there. There's something lasting in there. My friend, is, my friend is just creaming this guy. You know, he told me the best way to do it, is, and is correct, by the way, if you guys want to take on this guy by your own. You know, I, I ended up fighting him with another friend later, just so I could get some more practice with him, but I, I really want to fight him 1v1. You really just gotta hit the head. When you hit the head, you can see there's like... You know, you get this little point in time to do this massive critical strike, and that's how you take him down. Now that the beastie is dead, we can take down the man. Oh, but what is he, man? He just looks like an old guy. He's not going to be any trouble. False. He's going to fucking own you. He's going to fucking own you, bro. See, now I just learned how to roll. Finally. Had some take some of the heat. We're still in this, dog. We've got some good, we got a good amount of Estus left. All right, let's put on the toastage. The best way to destroy a piece of bread is to turn them into toast. And you might be asking yourself, why would you not just like throw a piece of bread in the garbage? Because let me tell you something. The toast, not only are you destroying your opponent, your enemy, your fucking, you know, the, the person that you hate the most, but you are also creating a benefit for yourself in the form of delicious toast. And that's why I'm all about the toastage uh, and the roastage and not necessarily, uh, you know, just absolute decimation or, or destruction. Decimation, you know, destroying to the, to the quantity of 10 does not seem to fit this profile very much. All right. Oh, 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 garçon. He's playing some tricks with us. Grabby bigots, slap him in the head. If you're French and watching this, I apologize. You know, I mean, characters happen, but what I did was just demonization of your entire species and uh, or not species entire race i did it again you fall into some racial loopholes and and uh, it's probably not good for everything that we're rolling here you know i'm doing remarkably well in this attempt come on come on i want you to do it i want you to do it yep so we're, we're having some like very significant time taking down the beastie here come on bring it on bitch i want you to do it just stir me i want you to Watch it do it. Why don't you take off that little mask? None of these people will die. Oh, and I'm a man of my word. I'm sorry, I'm not getting a good Joker impression. Either look, my impressions, you know, they they come and they go. Right now they're on the they're on the way out. They're visiting their family right now for the holidays. It's you know, it's not me, okay? This guy's got some massive fucking juice. Look at that. Big old spear probably think he's compensating for something. Yeah, he was fucking left by his father, so that's what he's compensating for, you absolute dick. Ho ho ho! Look, man, I didn't mean it like that. Like, you don't have to come off as... Look, man. 
We all know you're playing up a stereotype right now, but sometimes you just say some things that aren't right. I wish my buddy would, like, actually heal up. He might be out of juice right now. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, it's so good. It tastes so good. I probably should have let my... <laughs> My friend has a much bigger weapon than I do. I probably should have let him do it. Oh my god, alright. We're in the throws. We're in the final phase. It's getting so close. Don't leave me. Mommy. Okay. Oh my god. We've done it. Round three, bitches. That's all it takes. Third time's the charm. I, I was told. I was shown the way. Ooh, baby, I love your way. I want to see a cutscene for days. And, uh, again, for whom the bell tolls. Which, you know, it looks like uh, the tollage was, was for the Nameless King because he's the one that died in this battle. We get infinite lives, he gets one. But he is a monster. So much respect to that boss battle. That has, by far, turned into one of my more favorite boss fights of all time. Um... The optional bosses are always like a really great part of, of Dark Souls in general, but this one they really just kind of stuck it to it. And when you guys understand the lore implications behind the boss as well, if you know we're already, you know, know or not, you know what's going on with that, then um, that's kind of cool. It's it's a little bit cool. I just want to be cool, man. What are you talking about? You are cool. The way you play. You are fat and you have body odor. I'm quoting School of Rock. It has nothing to do with this video or anything in general, but it's a film of life. My friend bows to me in a very, very nice way. All right, we took him down. For a lot of people, it takes him a lot more times than, you know, I guess on the third try when we roasted this guy. Um, and uh, it's, not a, it's not a subtle brag. Uh, you know, this guy took me a lot longer when I was playing with my other friend. I think we just got lucky. Good combination. Both of us are decent players. Uh, my friend, Dark Moon Knight, he's a good player himself. You can go check out his channel, check out his PvP, and see how good he really is. Ha-ha! <laughs> nice plug. But um, but it was really, you know, it was a good correlation, amount of luck, uh, a little bit of skill. Uh, I liked that I changed my armor to a good set. I think it all worked out for the best. But for the most part, I had a good time. Isn't that what it's all about? Having a good time? So let's take these fat, juicy-ass souls and turn them into something great. Touch the demon inside. Tar t touch the darkness inside of me. I'm sorry. All right, we get all of that, and we get two levels. Oh, like, I'm not salty. I'm just, you know, I wish some things were different. But we're up in our vitality and our strength. We're moving towards a really fat strength build. That's what I like to see. I want to become the Nameless King myself. And, of course, you know, always give the ashes to the girl. Give her ash so we can get some ass. What? That's not a thing. Also, she's a little bit too old for me. It's not like I'm, I'm not ageist. It's not like I've, I've, I shy away from the older chicks. I'm just trying to say, you know, I mean, there's a, there's some levels. There's a step. I'm not at that step yet. But we're looking around for the nameless king stuff, and we found it. Dragon skill. Dragon skill waste cloth of a nameless king who is allied to the ancient dragons. Dragon skills are razor sharp and cannot be burned. We're about to learn something pretty cool, so stick around here. These golden breastplates uh, with the golden breastplate and crown are said to closely resemble those of the First Lord. Well, that's quite interesting. What kind of First Lord are they talking about? The First Lord I can only think of is the First Lord of the world, which was Gwyn. This golden crown buried amidst long strands of bristling ash is said to closely resemble that of the First Lord. Of the Nameless King, who was allied to the dragons. What? I don't quite understand at this point, and until I read his soul, I don't think that I still understood what this was, what the First Lord was, what this guy was. But we're about to find something pretty, pretty juicy. Do we do that? I don't know. If we, I don't even know if we do that in this, in this Let's Play. It's a great question. Crown of the Nameless King. I decided to put it on because I thought it would look badass, and then I realized I just look like really silly. You can laugh at me. Look, I, I don't put it past you. You know, we. I live my life trying to create joy for people. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I think I was aware I was being filmed, but at this point in time, I, you know, I'm sure it was out of my head. I'm not sure. It's just too crazy. The hair's too crazy, man. I like the design. It looked badass when I had like a death face, or when the when the boss had a death face. But this is. This isn't it. 
And of course, gotta burn the shard, of which would have helped during the boss battle, I'm sure. Well. Uh, we're just kind of standing here. I do thank you guys for watching the episode. I don't know if I'm going to end it right here or not. We'll have to see. For you guys, you can just take a quick peek in the YouTube uh, you know, video length bar and you're done. But for me, my life lives in a little bit more turmoil than yours does. It's a little bit more tumultuous. And, uh, you know, I kind of like that. I'm a risk taker, you know. I like having life swing in the balance like that. You guys can live your life all calculated with video lengths and whatnot. I'm going to just go loosey-goosey, baby. Live it with the... You know, just live my life day by day. I may have started to put it together at this point. Well, I'm not quite sure. But in case you guys don't get the references going on here, in the very first game, there was a, uh, a creature, a creature, a, a boss. Uh, at the very end of the first game, so if you haven't played the first game, a little bit of spoiler, but, you know, whatever, we, you know, he's part of the lore, he's built in, you should know it by now. His name is Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. He was the very first lord of this land, uh, found his lord, or his, his lord soul within the flames of the first fire that erupted the, you know, causing disparity in the cracks of time of the Nameless Age. But, um, yeah, I look like shit. I understand, it's okay. I look like a Navajo, like, Indian warrior or something. I don't know what's going on there. But Gwyn had many, uh, many children, of which we're aware of, of, of most. Uh, one of them was named uh, Guinevere. Um, one of them was named Gwendolyn. It's real fucking subtle, man, putting your own name in your own kid's name. So, I, you know, I would say that that's kind of a, a flaw of hubris. You know, you're trying to obviously leave your own lasting legacy instead of letting your kids leave their own lives as their own individuals. They'll always be haunted by the existence of your name within their own. Maybe I took that a little too far, but it's possible. But, uh, there was one, his firstborn child, which we never, I'm doing, just doing some fashion souls and joy while I'm doing this description here, which the only thing we heard of in Dark Souls 1 was a little, some tidbits of lore, and the first thing that's most important is that, you know, he had done something wrong and been erased from the annals of history, not the annals, don't be the, don't be that kind of listener that hears something funny and talks to their friends like, oh, Mecca Will said anal. I did not. I said anal. There's a big difference. Anal is when you do anal sex but come in sideways. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so basically, uh, you know, there's a his firstborn child was wiped out of the history books. All the statues of him were disposed of. He was basically wiped clean from the slate. Um, it's said that he went into, you know, some sort of exile um, because of his actions, of which nothing are really, really said, but it was, like, talked about as a war crime. He used to be known as the God of War, uh, the firstborn child of Gwyn. And then also, like the last bit of a, uh, last bit of thing that you probably need to know is that he also headed, like, founded and created and closely watched over the Warriors of Sunlight, of which Solaire and Sun Bros and everything originate from. So he was very big into, you know, that kind of motif. And then the last thing you gotta know is that his, his father, Gwyn, utilized a lot of lightning spells. So you can see the immediate correlation between the Nameless King and Gwyn's firstborn. Um, oh, and if we get the chance... Oh. A great deal of Hawkwood Swordcrest, well, okay. Now that, what would you have? That's just finishing part of the quest line from earlier, I guess. Please. Oh, by the way, if you find, they can be used. Oh, that you wouldn't fucking, uh, you don't think I know that by now? I'm, I'm at the end of the game, Andre. This is kind of the last point in time where you really need to be telling that me that kind of information, isn't it? Oh, look at you, Mecha Will, treating this game like it's real life and then pointing out its flaws. You're so original, man. You're so original. You do your stuff really well. You know, you know I'm a big fan of you, Mecha Will. You got great content. You're so funny, you know? You're always tasteful. You always talk about really great. You know, really great, really relevant things. You know, I watch a lot of your Rocket League videos. They're all so relevant, you know? You're always talking about the game and strategies and just great stuff, you know? I, I, just, I respect it so much, you know? I respect you. You know, you're always, uh, you're always showing people exactly what they want, exciting footage, you know? Uh, it's just a funny, funny guy. Like, I, I don't know. 
so talented at games too. I mean, you don't really know how to play them and talk about them. There's not a lot of praise I can give you besides that, you know. Yeah, so so great, so funny. Always, you know, always, always on point. Always, always topical. That's what I appreciate about you, about you, Mega Will. You're you're just so topical. You're just a great guy, you know. Also, there's a dude fighting in Firelink, and I don't know why. He probably did the bullshit thing, which is, let's attack these NPCs who have never done anything to harm you in their lives and have spent their entire purpose in this Firelink shrine serving you. Um, let's just, you know, let's gut them and try and steal their petty valuables. This is why the world is fucked up, kids. This is why. Because we live in a day and age where people don't respect their elders, their mentors, and their helpers. We are but uh, floating souls in the uh, dark souls of life. I'm just standing here. I feel like I should probably end the episode, but I do feel like at some point in time we're going to be off to travel towards uh, finishing up this Hawkwood quest, which we do need to do. And at that point in time, you know, we've killed the Nameless King. We've dragged this episode out long enough. You guys don't want to hear my dulcet tones for that long? I don't think so. I don't know. I might be wrong about that, but who knows? I will say, we've gotten the, you know, the channel starting to grow. I appreciate you guys so much. You know, I'll be doing a channel update really soon. I really want to talk to you face to face and talk about some more things in the future as well as just the strength of my channel going forwards. This is not a thing I'm going to drop, so, you know, don't be worried if you guys are, you know, you guys have stuck with me. I will provide for you like a mother with bursting breasts full of milk. Um, you will be feeding off the teats of YouTube. That just, you know, that just, okay, I'm sorry. That just went totally in the wrong direction. Took it in the wrong way. We're moving again. This is, this is good. Just scratch everything that I just said. You know, you guys are my hope and you guys are the hope, the hope of my dreams. <sighs> Fucking hell. You put on great commentary for so long and suddenly nothing comes out. What can you do? Careful what you say and who you say and who you say it to. See, at first I thought that that song was kind of clever, and then I realized the second line doesn't make any sense. It's really just two lines repeated three times, and then I was just like, that's not very clever, man. Careful what you say makes sense. Careful who you say, not a thing. This is not a thing that we do. This is, you know, English class, useful. Careful who you say and who you say it to. So here, my buddy just told me to go here. And then I turn around and I'm like, what do you want, motherfucker? Let's just see this dude standing in this pile of corpses. I'm like, what's up, bro? And much like the Wild West, we sit there and stare at each other for about 10 minutes before we make a move. See, it's all a mind game. PvP, the first thing you want to do besides getting your sword out is get inside the mind of the opponent. I should have known. Huh. Well, I decided to stop running from my fear. That's probably a good move. Loathe me all you like. I shall take what makes you gladder. Uh, you know, you can give it a shot. Um, I'm not opposed to you dethroning me if you're good enough, but fuck you, man. You're going to have to come at me with better than that. Hey. Yeah, that was a that was a good that was a well timed parry. Made me feel satisfied about what's going on. I also am not comfortable with the fact that we're just kind of like we're just kind of like you know attacking on top of a field of corpses. You know, probably buddies of Hawkwood. Like I said, I don't know Hawkwood's backstory too much. I'm kind of ashamed of that, but you know it is what it is. Here we've got oh you fucking juicer. All right, no more honor duel. He knew that was coming. He did a little backstep. That was actually kind of clever. It's kind of cool seeing this in post commentary. But you guys can see how I would take down a PvP invader because when I actually do some PvP, you guys are going to you know, basically see me get ganked a million times. So that's that's not a good thing. You guys got a massive sword though. I got to say, I do appreciate. I do appreciate the big. Let me tell you ladies, I'm with you when you like big things. I like big things too, especially in the sword department. I know you ladies, you're, you know, when you say you like big stuff, you're talking about swords too, right? Am I right? Great swords, because you guys play a lot of fantastical video games, is that correct? Maybe? No? Maybe not? Oh, this guy's just juicing all the hell, man. How many Estus does he have? My buddy was like, this guy's pretty difficult. I don't disagree. You know, obviously he's very aggressive. But, you know, with the help of your Estus flasks, he's not terrible.
Maybe you talk too much and you want not asking for it. Asking for it. Bring it on, hawk suck. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have. He probably should have juiced at that point. That's that's his flaw right there. You know what? We utilize our enemy's flaws so we can take advantage. Oh, what was that? Trying to juice. Didn't get one off. Nope. Okay, he did get that one off. But he paid the price for it. Oh, shit. I just destroyed that boy. That was a good. It was a clutch heal. Oh, my God. You fucking piece of shit. All right. We're still taking care of business, though. Lover boy style. Working for the weekend. And that is it. See, this I appreciate. At least he, you know, at least he, at least he gives us the props that we deserve. I, we deserve those props. I'm with you, dog. Dog, I'm with you. Dog, I'm in there. I'm in there, dog. Yeah, that was a good battle, though. At this point in time. We finished up everything that we need to. So I thank you guys so much for watching this episode, man. Uh, a lot of fun stuff went on in this one. If you guys like the video at all, uh, the like button definitely helps out the series, helps out the channel, helps out all the goodies. Uh, and if you guys want to join the rest of the mech army, the subscribe button is only two seconds away from you. Sitting down there somewhere. You'll be notified of all my new videos. And uh, beyond that, it supports us as a community together. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys uh, liked what you saw. And I also, uh, I'll be uploading videos on the daily. So I'll see you guys next show.